Hey guys, welcome back to One House Pub. Well, yes, I am still sitting here at the cabin. Just finished my knife philosophy downsizing um, video and uh, uh, wanted to go ahead and shoot a video review here um, of one of my smaller knives. And it was one that I actually purposely neglected showing in that video. I spread out all those different knives, the Sabenzas and the Kingdom Armory and the ZT-0900, the Kingdom Armory Mini Sam. Uh, because I wanted to kind of save this one for its own introduction. And that is uh, a knife that I kind of bought, kind of crazy um, uh, impulse buy, uh, but it was a knife that I wanted to get the large version of for a long time, but just could never make myself buy it because it was just too large, too heavy of a knife for me. Uh, and when this maker came out with this small, I know I'm being all coy, like you don't know what it is. Frankly, you read the title. The surprise is over. The Andre de Villiers Mid-Tech Mini Tac Butcher. This is another of those three inch EDC knives um, that I just have fallen in love with, uh, this particular size. Uh, this particular one is, like I said, it's the uh, um, mini tack butcher. It's the the, the full size butcher is about a three, is a three and a half or three and three quarters. I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, it didn't really matter because it's like a seven ounce knife, and it's just way too heavy for me. Um, and I always dug them. I see them on IG and whatnot. And uh, it's such a cool knife, but I just couldn't bring myself to actually buy one because I knew it's just too big for me. Even before I kind of made this switch to uh, smaller knives or whatever. The, uh, the 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 seven ounces was just overwhelming to me. Um, and the, he has another one called the Pathfinder, which I totally dig as well. Um, and if he ever comes off the Mini Pathfinder, look out. But in the meantime, again, just it's just as neat looking as they are, and as cool a knife as they seem to be, um, it's not just not something I'm going to buy. Um, but the Mini, when he came out with his Mini, now he has had the Mini out before. He came out with the Mini, I think, last year or maybe even the year before. I don't remember exactly what year the the Mini came out. Um, and, uh, frankly, I didn't even know they were out. I, I wasn't following him that closely. Um, I discovered these on Instagram, um, a couple, uh, I don't know, a few weeks ago, I guess it was, or wherever it was, I, I, I first stumbled across this, and Andre was posting pictures of the Mini, he had it up against, pictures of, pictures of it up against the full size, and I was like, oh my gosh, that, if I'm going to get one, that's the one I should get. Um, and then I started to learn a little bit more about these particular knives. The uh, this this is the uh, generation three he actually calls it. So again, I don't know I don't know a lot about the history of the Gen one and the Gen two, but I do know the Gen three kind of. And uh, let me give you some of the highlights to it. Um, it does come with a stainless steel lock bar insert. It's, it's all titanium, of course. Has the, a larger uh, pivot. It looks like a custom pivot. It is. It's a decorative pivot, but it's just a, a Torx pattern, which is cool. Um, the thumb disc, the knurled uh, satin thumb disc, is new. Uh, the other ones just had, it doesn't have any jimping now. That thumb just takes over that, that location. Um, it also has, uh, um, what is it? There's another, there's another couple things new from the uh, previous gens. I can't remember what he said now. He sent me an email when I first started inquiring about it and told me about it. And I apologize. It's um, bigger than that. Uh, you know what? I don't know. Maybe and maybe that's it. I'm, I apologize. I'm kind of drawing a blank here all of a sudden. But uh, that's not my point. I'm not here. To, I don't want to necessarily compare the generations. I just want to talk about this particular knife in general and, and kind of show it to you. Uh, again, it's the uh, Mini Tack Butcher or the Mini Butcher, but you can see it is Mini Tack. It is Tack. He doesn't have the word Mini on here, but trust me, it's Mini. It's f certainly not a full size. Here it is in comparison to. Oh, let's go ahead and do the small Sabenza. That's a pretty uh, standard. You can see it's really the size of a small Sabenza. It's a little broader this way, but clearly the size of a small Sabenza. Uh, you get, uh, at least I can get, all four fingers on the handle. It's a, th a th little under four inches. I think it's like three and seven eighths inch handle, if I recall correctly. I'm sure Bert has already eviscerated me for not knowing the specs and the differences on the uh, all the different generations of this. And he's looked all that up in the meantime in, in post-editing and has already mocked me furiously. Correct? Yeah, I figured. Um, at any rate, uh, so you can see I can get all four fingers on there. 
fits well. Um, I can cheat back and just do three and put that third one on the butt of the of the knife if I want to. But I actually find it a little bit more comfortable just going ahead and um, doing uh, doing all four. Uh, blade stock is. Um, 157 thousandths, if memory serves. It's got a what he what, what Andre calls a um, a gun coated or gun color coated. I can't remember exactly what he calls it. Bert, pull my bacon out of the fire here again. I apologize. Uh, all this fresh air and good living up here at the cabins uh, making me lazy, I guess. Um, and so it's, and it looks a lot like a like a black wash, but it's really not. I've got a black wash knife here. It's the uh, 0550. And you can see, if you look close, you can see how that's black washed. You can see the black washing effect. If I can get the focus here. Focus on the blade. You know, you can see the stone washing done to the, to, to the black coating, right? That's black wash. This is really more of like a gun bluing. It's really cool the way he has rubbed all the edges and kind of boba fetted the whole thing around. So it's already kind of got that pre-worn look to it, which is very cool. This knife's going to hold up great to uh, to wear. I've broken down some boxes with it, and it's actually it's a pretty decent cutter. Um, it's a full flat, or excuse me, it's a flat grind from here, um, the from the fuller down, uh, and um, it actually comes to a pretty decent. And now I've sharpened it. I've put my wick, you know, on the wicked edge. Um, I've got it at 18 degrees per side here. So, um, you know, it's especially sharp now, and it cuts pretty well. But even before then, it's not terrible. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not a, it's not this knife. It's not a chaparral. This thing is just teeny behind the edge. So, you know, it's not that. It's not even a small Sabenza. This knife is nice and thin behind the edge. It's not thin like this knife is. Although uh, that one's decent, but it's not. The EDV's not terrible. You know, it's really not. The, the only difference is here is, is, is you, know, you have about 40% of the blade before the grind starts to bring. So it, it's in a pretty abrupt um, transition to the actual uh, secondary bevel, so uh, it right behind the edge is not bad, but it does thicken then appreciably as you approach the kind of this sixty percent mark of the uh, up the blade, sixty sixty five percent or so, um, and uh, you know so and then you have this stuff which can in in true cutting stuff um, you know cutting through certain media the, this could be an impediment because you could catch and stuff you know it's uh, it's maybe not the most purest cutting tool ever um, from that perspective, but dang, is it sexy. Look at that thing. <laughs> I just, I don't know, you know, call me a ball ninja if you want, but when I saw this knife, the very first time, actually the large version, I just, I just thought this was so cool. Now you guys know I have a Warren Cliff fetish if you're a subscriber to this channel, so no surprise that this knife should make me, um, make me stand up and take notice, but what a cool knife. Anyway, then you have this cool front swedge here which uh, makes it actually a fairly decent piercer um, and kind of the cool thing about that too is because of that swedge much like the uh, the uh, Insingo if you look at a if you look at a Sabenza Insingo it's got the similar swedge and that swedge not only allows you the piercing ability because um, it doesn't give you such a blunt end up you're pressing is something but also what force is applied to that swedge is then push pushes down on the nose of the knife and which then applies force directly into the cutting edge so you know it's not only weight savings and, and cool looking uh and and, and doesn't only and it also allows better piercing but it also what piercing you do do then drives force down into the cutting edge so that's uh, a nice little benefit as well it does have a little bit of run and jimping right here which is pretty decent actually not bad at all um you can also kind of get a a little bit of a purchase on the uh on the thumb disc thumb discs typically aren't my favorite um because they kind of get in the way in my pocket but this one doesn't this one's actually really good uh you can open it via the thumb disc no problem at all uh, you can use spidey flick it with the thumb disc no problem at all you can open it with the the fuller or the blood groove if you want no problem at all and of course it does have a flipper with the cool little hole there jumping right on top Indicating, once again, like kind of like a hinderer, 
with, on this XM18, Rick Hinder puts the jimping back here, trying to tell you, hey, it's not a pull type, don't do this. Well, this really isn't a pull type either. <coughs> Excuse me. If you pay attention to the maker and, and you follow his lead, and he'll tell you how he wants you to, to apply force. And he wants you to apply force down as a push button or at least a, a force and, and use that as grip to pull back. Um, either one of those two ways work. If you try to light switch this, it's much like a Savenza, or a Savenza, much like a Hender XM18. just doesn't want to do that. Now, if you really just load up and almost, you know, you could maybe... If I really try hard, I can light switch it, but that's not the way to do it. Again, follow Andre's lead. Fires right out. And it fires out with authority. So, now, some people have said I'm just going to uh, have a knack for these non-light uh, switch type flippers, and maybe that's the case. I can, I can flip a knife pretty well. Again, I really don't have a problem with the hinder if you don't think that flips well. I mean, I think you can hear and see and um, <laughs> that that's flipping just fine. Same here, this thing. And again, this is a small little knife, and it's still coming out of there with authority. As long as you don't light switch it. That's just not what this knife is meant to do. Push button or kind of a, a grab, uh, you know, apply some pressure and then drag back. Either of those two methods make the flipper work great. Um, also has a cool titanium backspacer here, notched backspacer. And uh, lock bar stabilizer, of course. Really excellent milling all around this knife. The the fit and finish on this knife is nothing short of amazing. The, whether it's the grinds or perfection, the, all the milling is perfect. There's no misses. Everything is symmetrical. It's just impressive. Excuse me, impressive what he has done here. Let's take a look to appreciate that if you can get the lighting right. I am outdoors, so I'm kind of fighting, and it's a little bit later in the afternoon, so. But all this, this V milling and, and just the edges are, 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 are rounded and chamfered, and, and just everything is just done right. And you know, it's just. All these steps, the steps down and the steps down. The pocket clip, look at this cool pocket clip. It stands on these two posts, it's a spring clip. Has excellent retention, but not too much retention. Let's have a little bit of jimping right here, which I'm not really sure of the function. That doesn't get in the way of anything. It doesn't bother me. I just maybe for when you reach in and grab, and maybe that gives you a little bit more purchase. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't noticed that it does, but maybe it does. I carry my um, my knives in my jeans in a little bit different way. If you've seen my video on uh, how I do my jeans in my, my everyday EDC, kind of my non-work EDC. Bert, Bert, why don't you go ahead and post a video to that, or excuse me, a link to that video. You see the uh, the Levi's Carpenter pants that I always wear and, and, some, and shorts of the same uh, make and model. And um, those, uh, yeah, my thumb is still beat up. See that? My thumb is still roughed up from that horrible murder assassination attempt in, in uh a few weeks ago from my large Sabenza in single in my car when it was brand new. Anyway, um, so again, pocket clip-wise, it's excellent, and it carries great for me. Um, you have the uh, kind of the Hinder-esque lock bar stabilizer. You know, like I said, the insert st stainless steel insert. No lock stick at all. Zero, none. Just, well, I should say zero. Maybe if it does have any, it's just that that slightly, ever so slight bit of little hydraulic stick you get on a Sabenza, but I, that's not, I don't even count that as lock stick, that's just, that's just letting you know that those two have interfaced, um, so no, no lock stick, um, the grinds are just exquisite, and accentuated with all the, uh, you know, the way that the, 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 the gun coating is just, um, kind of pre-worn and Boba Fett it out for us. Cool pivot. Uh, nice shiny thumb disc. It's just there's there's just nothing wrong with this knife. He didn't everything about the way it's built is just spot on. It's just impeccable. It's really it's just really impressively made. The only and this is the only issue that I had with it when I first got it was that um, uh, 
I did have to Loctite the pivot. After having it for a little while, the pivot worked a little bit loose, and uh, tighten it back up, and then it would work a little bit loose. Not this side, um, but just, you know, it wouldn't spin, but this would just... Uh, just get I would just notice it getting a little loose so some Loctite in there and solve that problem um, but that's a very common it's this is not a pivot bushing system or anything like that this uh, has thrust bearings in it actually and um, but it's just standard normal you know screw in pivot otherwise um, so uh, nothing um, no big surprise there a lot of my knives I have to Loctite the pivot on and I'm sure you guys do as well um, since doing that it's absolutely rock solid there's no play and I mean zero none nada up, down, side to side, it, it, there's just nothing. You can't even muscle it. And, thank free drops. Because of the uh, small size here, it's not always easy to get the, uh, to display for me, but you can see that it, there we go, free drops. It's, uh, like I said, it's on thrust bearings, and uh, when I took the knife apart the first time, actually the only time I've had it apart, uh, just kind of wanted to see what it looked like in there. Got it in there, it was, and, and usually when I get a new knife, I'll take it apart and clean it up and put it back together and you either put in Daiwa real oil or Chris Reeve or fluorinated grease or whatever. Um, in this case, I just left it alone. I got in there, and it had what looked to be and what seems logical, I guess, bearing grease, um, you know, like you'd find in a, like in, 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 if you were doing a brake job. Um, it works fine, so, I, you know, I instead of going through the effort of cleaning it all up, I just went ahead and uh, left it alone and put it back in or, or put it all back together. And uh, it's very smooth. Um, it's not smooth like like this. It doesn't feel like a Sabenza. Maybe if I put the Sabenza grease in there, you know, the, the Chris Reeve grease, it would. But it doesn't feel like a Sabenza. Um, kind of has its own unique feel. I don't know. It's hard to explain. Um, but it's free dropping, like I said. Uh, perfectly centered. And I mean perfection. I mean, the knife is just built so freaking well. I just, I'm just so impressed by it uh, you know when you kind of buy this guy lives in south africa and i you know contacted him via facebook and sent or sent him an email and then we started facebooking messaging back and forth and placed my order and paypal'd him and literally from the moment he got the paypal i had this knife in my hand he had this knife in his hand in south africa put it in a private courier's hand and i had it four days later <laughs> and that was included in the price that's crazy I and mean, you can buy it for the same exact price from Blade HQ uh, now because he also sells through them and, and other retailers too, Knife Center and whatnot. I think other, I, I don't know who all those retailers are. Um, <laughs> but it was just kind of cool getting it direct from, from him in South Africa and getting it in about the same amount of time it would take to get it from any normal, you know, domestic retailer. Um, that's pretty funny. Uh, I just, I've really come to just absolutely love this little knife. Um, and it is every bit... Uh, it has every bit the cool factor that these other little knives that I talked about in my uh, knife philosophy downsizing video. Um, uh, it's just, the, in many ways, um, I, I, you know, it's, it's tough to say, but in many ways, this knife, um, uh, well, I have a lot of, I, it's tough for me to say because I love the Sabenzas, and the small Sabenzas are so awesome. And I love to get the other guy out here you know these two are awesome and i love this little mini armory or excuse me mini samaritan by kingdom armory um these are three great little miniature knives that i have just absolutely come to love oh we can't forget this guy um maybe the small knife the uh, upper end knife that kind of started it for me certainly um these the Cold Steel Mini Recon uh, very much excited me and kind of got me going a little bit on smaller knives, but not by any means pricey at all. Um, this was probably the uh, the first more expensive smaller knife, I mean, at least dimension-wise. It's it's a big, thick knife regardless, and these are much smaller in general. Um, but this little guy, there's just something about him. When I got him, I was like, you know what? There is something about this size knife that this just proved to my maybe to my brain that um, that a small knife can be every bit as enjoyable and fun to have in your pocket as a big knife. And in, in, in this case, the big more so than the big knife would be for this particular um, version of the knife. Um, uh, you, know, you think it's a little bit broad, but in reality, it's not. Just because of its size, look at that. It's actually less broad 
or no more broad, really, than a uh, Sage 2. So, no worries there. Great fun knife to fondle and to use. Like I said, I've used it some and um, used it enough that I needed, I actually left the factory edge alone. I used it some until I thought that I would uh, go ahead and put my own edge on it because it uh, just wasn't as sharp as I wanted it to be anymore. S35VN, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that. Uh, there we go. S35. Uh, sharpened up uh, relatively well, relatively easily, um, like S35, really. Uh, I would say it's probably closer to Rick Hinderer's in hardness than um, Chris Reeves, probably. Um, but I don't know. I don't know what, what, what Rockwell he runs it at. Um, but I expect it to perform. Uh, pretty much as S35 always does, which means great because I love and I love S35VN steel. It's one of my I probably have more knives and upper end knives in S35 than anything else, and have owned more upper end knives than that particular steel. Well, maybe S30, maybe a tie between those two. Um, but uh, I am a definite fan of S35VN for its um, for EDC for sure, um, for its usability, its sharpenability, its ability to hold an edge and to not chip out. It doesn't doesn't chip. You know, um, the, it's got an extra toughness than that from the ni niobium, and you can, you can see that when you when you use it. Uh, it's not it's not as chippy as some other steels. Andre De Villiers, ADV Tactical, Mini Tech Butcher, S3, in S35 VN, and what I'll call gun glued finish. I am in love with this little warning, or is it a sheep's foot? Good question. A Warren's Foot Sheep's Cliff? Maybe. <laughs> All right, guys. As always, thanks for watching. If you have a penchant to pick up one of these knives, I can't recommend it highly enough. You will not be disappointed in it if it's anything like mine. The only one I've ever owned. The only one I've ever had my hand on. So maybe I just got a really, really, really good one. But I did get a really, really, really good one. <laughs> so... Anyway, guys, that's one else two cents. Keep the change. Slaughter.